All right, welcome to the third episode this week of Through a Therapist's Eyes in our new format. I am Chris Gazdick. He is Craig Graves. I am a mental health and substance abuse therapist. Craig, what are you anyway? I'm a mindset coach, man. All right, tell us what that is super quick. Help you get ahead in life by figuring out the things in your mind that are keeping you stuck. Unbeatable, or I'm sorry, winininyourmind.com. I love it. Got a book under Reunderstanding Emotions and Becoming Your Best Self. Check it out. Amazon, Goodreads, Barnes & Noble. Everything's available now. We're going to have to kind of go into an audio version of the book, Craig. You know, I understand that's something like later on that to, to add after several months of the book being out. Yeah, you have to read it. You have to be the guy. I think so. Yeah. That's funny that it's you say that. It's always better when the author does it. Dude, I think that, why would you not? Yeah. You can give your verbal expression of it and add to the yeah. nonverbal conveyance. Yeah, of that I listen message. to audiobooks, and it's always better when it's the author. So, yeah, you should do that. That's funny because I need the paper version, man. I'm, I'm a paper guy. See the world through the lens of a coach and a therapist. Being aware it's not delivery therapy services in any way, check out through a com, where Neil is rocking and rolling, making it a cool website and a good resource for you. Betterhelp.com is on there as well. Click counseling tab helps to support the show and you get counseling within your own home through better help craig this is the human emotional experience marriage is one of the ones that oh boy i tell you what it can be so beautiful when things are clicking and working but when they're not they're so painful they really are there's a lot of people hurting out there in marriage so this is the human emotional experience i endeavor to figure this thing out together with you let me check in with you, Craig, episode three of the new format. Where's your head at with what we've been talking about? How are you feeling about all this? It's interesting stuff, man. I'm ready to get after it. Well, what have you been thinking about what we've done so far? I don't want to let you off the hook that easy. What am I thinking about? I think it's good stuff. I think it's interesting. Let people look at it a different way and think about it a different way, and uh, hopefully it helps. The golden circle of marriage. Have you ever thought about that in that way? I'm sure you haven't. Accepting somebody. You know, what that really means. I thought about, yeah, I thought about that. Expressing things to people, what that really means. And we're on conveying things now. We'll get to receiving here today. Yeah, I think the other thoughts are probably new. I think receiving is probably something that goes along with acceptance. So probably have thought about those two concepts. But expressing and conveying are definitely something that's new to me. It's new to me, honestly. It's my own thinking, right? The golden circle. I told you in, in on, uh, what is it, Tuesday, I think, or Monday, rather, when we started this, this journey together this week. I, I don't know where it came from, Craig, but we're, we're conveying something to your spouse. I, I'm really working on this. As we're doing this show, I'm thinking a lot about this because I don't really work with that concept in therapy. But let's look at the, the, the part of the definition together Craig when you're trying to convey something you're trying to carry us to a place you know if we have something to express okay we do but then comes the conversation now I want you to really ask yourself when you're trying to implement these things in your marriage what's the point of what you're trying to express ask yourself that that's a challenge for everyone out there where do you want to go with what you're saying you ever think about that when you're trying to convey something to somebody? It's about movement. It's about we're here, this is where we want to go, and this is, this is, these are the thoughts that I'm expressing to you to convey us to there. If people went to a that's the point, this is where we want to be first in the conversation, what do you think that would be like? This is what I'm trying to convey to you. I want to be in a better place with our budget. That's the point. I think that's a good. I think that's a great point. You know, if, one of the things you have to do is tell people why, right? Yeah. So what's the why? What's the point? Just babbling a bunch of stuff at me. You got a point here? Yeah, right. actually, I do. You know. And then you convey that over into maybe even a suggestion when you're coming at to expression and conversing in a marriage. Offer suggestions. Offer ideas. Right. This is the vehicle upon which we travel to a new place. That's the point. All right. I think about, I think it came from the love and logic people with marriage, right? The notion that somebody came up across with was limit this conversation. When you're trying to convey something, you have a window of opportunity. Engulfment people. Listen up. That is not 5 minutes. <laughs> it's not. 
abandonment people. Listen up. This is not an hour or two long conversation. Boy, that's a takeaway, right? You got to find that sweet spot. Craig, how long can you focus on something? You know, I actually practice focus, so I don't know how I know, long right? I could do that. But What are those activities? How long do they last? My daily practice of focus is, is well, at least, at least five minutes of just focusing on a particular thing every day. And then I try to do that as part of my daily activities, too. Right. That's not five hours. Right. Definitely and, not. And what happens when you stop there for five minutes? That's a short time. I'm a little surprised by that. Because usually your breathing practices are like 20 minutes well, or whatever. Well, yeah. That's but where I, I break, thought you were going to go. I break them up into different sections. So the first five minutes is just kind of what we call arousal control. So just, just relaxing. Okay. The sex. The, the sex. The, 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 <laughs> second, the second piece of it is focused attention. That was a Freudian. Fo- focusing on a, on, on a pattern or an object. Okay. The third part of it is mindfulness, and the fourth part is a visualization. So, but, but like I said, during the day when I'm, when I'm doing other things, even workouts for me become focused practice. So I don't know how long I actually practice per day. It, it is more than five minutes. And uh, if I actually sat down and focused on something, I'm not sure how long I could I could do that either. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this as I was speaking about conveying something and the length of the conversation. Engulfment people can't be just five minutes. Abandonment people can't be two hours. And it occurred to me what I thought you were going to answer, and I think you just kind of did in a long about way. Dude, you're, 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 you're at your specific practices of breathing and visualization, that type of thing. I mean, you've talked about it being about 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a, excuse me, that's a balanced perspective. Yeah. Yeah. My goal is to do five minutes a day. I've done 20 minutes, at, at least 20 minutes a day, every day. It's March 14th since uh, the first of the year. I did do 15 minutes one day, but there's been several days I've done more than 20 minutes. So I've, I've averaged at least 20 minutes a day. Think about, Craig, what happens when you're really effective at accepting your spouse, receiving your spouse, or I'm sorry, accepting, geez, accepting your spouse expressing things to your spouse and conveying things to your spouse. When you're effective about that, you get to a pace of receiving your spouse. In a moment, we're going to talk about that. But really, man, what happens when you do those three things? You express, you know, do you get to a place of agreement? When you do these things effectively, I'm going to accept you. I'm going to express something to you. We're going to convey something and move from here to where we're going. That leads to an agreement. Now you're on par with each other. You're in sync with each other. We're here. We don't like that, or at least one of us doesn't like that, but we want to move to there. Do you know what an acceptance is, an agreement is? A contract? A norm. A contract is another word. Remember when we were talking somewhat recently about how norms are developed in marriage? I think that was the last marriage show. It's dangerous when you don't do this and you develop. And remember we talked about expectation, how horrible expectations can be and how they get a bad rap? Yeah. When you do this golden circle that we've been talking about the last couple of days, you get to agreement. And you can move from where you're at <clears throat> to where you want to be. And usually that's a beautiful. I really, like, listen, you people that are struggling with marriage out there, I struggle just as much as anybody else with marriage. It's a tough, tough thing. But how awesome is it is then when we get to, like, a place where, oh, you want to do that too? We agree. And then we're together. And those moments are freaking beautiful. Yeah, I agree with you, you know. Obviously, maybe I didn't have many of those, and that's... <laughs> You know, I, <laughs> right. I see that a lot in that, uh, you know, I teach that Dave Ramsey financial course. Up oh, yeah, it's great. Tr- and, and, man, couples come in there all the time and tell me we couldn't even say the word money without it being a knockdown, drag out, blow up. And now we're sitting down and having budget meetings and talking about finances. We're on the same page. And that's yeah. one of the reasons why I keep going back, man, because it really does make a difference in people's lives. It, it, and, and, I, I, and I appreciate you, Craig, doing that because I, I, it's one of my trifecta. You remember? Yeah. I haven't mentioned the trifecta in a long time, but, you know, love and logic. Oh, what's the other one? Yeah, love and logic, EFT, and then Dave Ramsey stuff, man. It's, yeah. it's, it, it absolutely, you get a chance to go to it, I, I think, as, to be a healthy spouse. It, it actually, I mean, you know, it's funny. We don't have a lot of time, Craig, because we got to get to the 
receiving component of the circle. But how does the love and how does the love and the how does the financial piece kind of mm-hmm. can you think about that in the golden circle? Like, do you see how what Dave talks about in finances specifically? You accept your spouse, you express things to your spouse, you convey to your spouse when you're looking at budgeting and having the the nerd and the the free spirit come together. Yeah, all those things are there. All those components they really are. There. Yeah, pretty much. You know, Dave talks about sitting down at that table when we were struggling with money early in their marriage. There was a lot of like, oh man, let's get down and dirty because we're struggling. Mm-hmm. He struggled with his finances. I mean, they would didn't they almost go bankrupt or something? I mean, they. I think he he may have con- yeah declared bankruptcy yeah, and, and and they just accepted each other and they began to express these things and talk about convey yeah. <laughs> They moved from where they were in the freaking snowball uh, strategy of finances to where they wanted to be. And now they're freaking doing pretty mm-hmm. good, bro. Mm-hmm. Receive your spouse to find. Be given, presented with, or paid something. Okay. Or on the negative side of things, suffer, experience, or be subjected to. That's the definition of being, you know, of, of received. Remember I told you you were going to be interested in the definition? You know what I looked up in Google when it said, receive your spouse? <laughs> you know what came up? I'm afraid to know. <laughs> I just typed into Google. Maybe you guys did it last night if you're following the show with the Golden Circle Marriage. <laughs> receive your spouse. And I popped a Google review. You know all I got? There was no people blogging on how to receive your spouse. There was no people blogging about marriage. There was no people discussing on boards like Cura and Very Well Mind or any of these things. Psychology Today. You know what came up? I have no idea. I haven't done it yet. How do you get your spouse's Social Security benefits? I went four Google pages in. You know how you get the G and the O and the O and the O? I went four deep. And that's like all I got. Well, that's kind of a weird term, receiving your spouse. Receiving your spouse? Yeah, I mean, what is that about? Yeah, I think so. I never heard that before today. Really? Yeah. If you think there's a thing for it, you should write some content because you'll show up on page one, apparently. Evidently, because receiving your spouse is interesting, right? To be given or presented with. You know, when you give yourself to somebody... Boy, what a beautiful thing. So first of all, you have to be given. You do not take your spouse. And that's an interesting concept as I began thinking about this piece of receiving. You don't take. If your husband is not giving himself to you, there's a reason, there's a problem. And I'm not talking sexually, but that's a part two. If, you're not, if your wife is not giving herself to you, well, that's a problem. You, you, know, you need to deal with that. Mm-hmm. But if they're giving something to you, you have to receive it. It's, a, it's like, dude, it's easy to receive a gift or a compliment. Well, what about receiving feedback? What about receiving their thoughts? What about receiving their heart? What about receiving their beliefs that are different than yours? I really think, Craig, we've been doing this all the way through, right? I really think that you should be spending all of our money on fun after we pay our bills. You're going to receive that? Or are you going to rebuke it? Are you going to rebuke it? Or are you going to accept it? It's a challenge. Well, right? I'm going to rebuke that, probably. Right? At least initially. <laughs> you have to problem solve that. You have to kind of get <laughs> figure out that. some it's, more details. It's tough, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's, where, that's where Gottman's four horsemen come in. I mean, you know, the four horsemen. See on a spot if I can get it. You're going to be defensive. You're going to be critical. You're going to be, have contempt for your spouse or you're going to stonewall with your spouse. So those are the four horsemen. Nailed it, didn't I? Impressive. That's good. Yeah, we'll do that next time. We're going to cover all four of those. Dude, it's, it's, it's tough to really receive, you know, unconditionally your spouse and do that agape love that we talked about, I think, on Monday or whatever, which is where agape love comes in. I mean, this is so critical and so difficult to do, okay? This is going to be a chapter in my book, the follow-up to re-understanding emotions and becoming your best self, the concept of learn your spouse. 20 years in, how are you going to learn your spouse? Well, hopefully you've learned a few things already. And things are always changing. Do you ever stop learning? You never your stop spouse? learning. I would say you never you stop can't. learning anything, especially that. 
You know, those old crumbly couples that are all bickering at each other, you know? Oh, they're such the cute old couple. They bicker and bicker and bicker. No, man, you need to learn it. You need to kind of go with this person. They are always changing. And so that is going to be a follow-up in my in my my first book. I'm going to write a book on marriage next time. You know what my wife actually said about that? What's that? She said, oh, I'll read that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet she will. Yeah, she will. It's scary. I'm going to be telling you, that's scary. You know, it's, oh, God, I'll just leave that alone. Let me see. Interesting on a Google research, like I said. It's interesting that, you know, that, 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 the Google search that I just described, Craig, when you receive something, are you getting something out of it? Yes. So when your spouse offers a thought, when your spouse offers a passion, when your spouse offers or tries to convey something, are you getting something out of it? Is that the point of receiving something? I think so, man. I mean, right? you're going a different direction than me, but yeah, I think it is. So if you compliment me, I'm trying to feed my ego. I want to get something out of it. It's tricky. It's tough. It's different. Yeah, I don't know, man. If I, give, if I like to think that my book will help something, that I'm, I'm not receiving accolades. I'm an Amazon best-selling author. Whoopee, woo, yeah, right, whatever. Oh, Chris is so great, right? No. Humble acceptance of somebody saying something nice about you is the goal. I'm not trying to get an ego boost. I'm actually trying to give something. So when you're receiving your spouse, you're not really wanting to get something out of receiving them. You're just accepting their view. You're accepting them in agape love, a selfless love. You don't get anything out of it. It's weird, right? When somebody's giving you something, it's not about you. They're giving you something. It's very difficult to say thank you. Much easier to say you're welcome. But it's weird, right? If you really think about the selflessness that goes into a marriage, boy, it, it's tough. It's weird, right? To, to, to receive something, but it's them. They're, they're like giving you a piece of them. It's not for your benefit. It's not about getting it. You don't want to get receive your spouse's social security benefits like the Google thing said. You want to really receive your spouse's benefit, I guess, but it's about it's about them. Like they're giving you their heart. And that's you need a soft place to land. I suck at that sometimes. I've been told. You know? It's it's tough because I'm opinionated and judgmental and I want things. It's terrible. So, weird, right? Receiving your spouse, it isn't about you. You're receiving them. It's about them if they're so willing to give to you. All right. Did I blow your brain away and I have a closing? No, it's good. Let's hear the closing. This is where we honor and respect your spouse resides. Honor your husband. Honor your wife. Receiving the thoughts and dreams and passions and direction of your spouse is what we mean by receiving them. You're receiving their thoughts. You're receiving their dreams. You're receiving their passion. You're receiving their direction. And wow, as I did this show prep, Craig, and I read those words that I wrote, they just came to me and I wrote them and I was like, wow, like this is a key to happiness with your spouse. Let me say that again. Honor and respect your spouse. You ever hear those, Craig? Some biblical terms. Yeah, obviously. Honor your spouse. Well, what you're doing is you're receiving the thoughts, dreams, passions, and direction of that person. That's what receiving them means. You know, what would happen if both spouses received each other? Where would you go? How would you be? This certainly builds emotional safety if you receive them. This is certainly a part of selfless love as what we strive for in agape love. Unfortunately, oftentimes our spouse offers us a thought, a direction, a passion, and we crush it. Don't mean to, but struggle with that. So I know that there's a lot of people struggling out with marriage. Marriage tends to be one of our more listened topics. You know, divorce, separation is a very real reality that we face and we struggle with, you know, in, in experiencing the most close relationship to us. I hope that we've offered in the last few days some thoughts about the golden circle to how to kind of manage that, you know. Dealing with 
the, the, the dynamic challenges that, you know, accepting another person is or expressing things to them and how to convey, move from one space to another and then actually receiving them. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool concept to be received. The golden circle of marriage. I think if we learn how to do those things, what do you think, Craig? Think we can get the marriage and divorce rate down to 20%? It's a long shot, but that's a good start. Right? Yeah. 25%? Hope so, man. Listen, you remember what the millennials have done with the marriage divorce rate, right? No. I remember if we did that show, it was going, they were going down. It was going down based on them. So The millennials figure out, or sideways, go get help. Go find somebody to talk to. Get an objective third party invested in this process of marriage. I guess those spoiled kids are doing something good after all, huh? They really are, man. They are. <laughs> Closing thoughts, man. Taxi is out of here. We have already determined because you've determined what we're doing next. Four horsemen. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Have a great week, everyone.